China is in the midst of a decades-long effort to modernize its nuclear arsenal. According to the Department of Defense, China may seek to double its current nuclear warhead stockpile of more than 200 warheads over the course of the next decade. Despite this assessment, some U.S. policymakers are concerned that China is seeking a nuclear arsenal that will rival those of the United States and Russia. The Trump administration made well-intentioned efforts to bring China into a nuclear arms control negotiation. However, the Trump administration failed to delineate the different nuclear doctrines, force structures, and modernization plans of the United States, Russia, and China, and it also failed to deliver equitable, specific arms control proposals to Beijing. As a result, the Biden administration faces a political reality in which it must bring China into an arms control process, but has very little work to build on from the previous administration. The United States has roughly 3,800 nuclear weapons in its stockpile. Compared to China's two or 300, this means that China would have to build an additional 3,500 nuclear weapons in order to close this numerical gap. Building nuclear weapons requires fissile material. This is the uranium and the plutonium that is actually burned within the weapon in order to produce an explosion. China is believed to have cut off its fissile material production, so it will be limited in the number of weapons that they could build based on how much fissile material they have on hand. Current estimates of the Chinese fissile material stockpile indicate that they'd only be able to approximately double the number of nuclear weapons that they currently have, and this is consistent with the Defense Intelligence Agency's publicly available estimates. So verifying that China has indeed cut off its fissile material production is a way to verify that they just simply do not have enough material to compete numerically with the United States. Against this background, our proposal has three different elements to it. First, China and the United States should jointly and publicly declare that they won't produce any more fissile material for nuclear weapons. Secondly, they should exchange information on how much fissile material for weapons they currently have on hand. And thirdly, they should develop targeted verification measures to address any concerns that each party might have with the other's compliance with the cutoff. So for example, they could arrange reciprocal inspections to facilities uh, at which fissile material was formerly produced to verify that such production uh, has now indeed ceased. Now, the United States has kind of taken some of these steps already. It's already formally declared a cutoff to fissile material production, and about 15 or 20 years ago released a fair amount of information, actually, about how much fissile material it had on hand. As a result, China is going to have to get some kinds of concessions for taking part in this arrangement. To date, it doesn't appear that China has thought all that much about what it would ask from the United States in return for arms control. And so one of the purposes of this project is to encourage our Chinese interlocutors and Chinese officials to think through that question and then to explore the trade space uh, in informal and then ultimately informal dialogues with their U.S. counterparts.